Previously, I drew two chairs and asked my lovely Instagram followers which one to render. And they chose the Nuevo Modern Winged Chair. Uh, that's, I don't know if that is its actual name, but that's what I found on Google. I wanted to approach this in a more traditional way and that is why I stuck with Sketchbook. While I do prefer Photoshop for rendering, Sketchbook can give you a more down-to-earth feeling. I'm not sure how to explain that exactly, but maybe you know what I mean. Okay, but uh, let's just uh, jump into it. So, what I did here is color the whole chair on one layer and then uh, the sitting cushions on a different layer and then I locked both layers. After that, I uh, started rendering, and what I mean by rendering is basically just adding the lights and the shadows. Uh, in this case, you can see me adding all the highlights to the wooden parts, and usually how I go about this is I uh, pick the base, base color and uh, lighten it up, but I also desaturate it a little bit. From my experience, if something is hit by hard light, it usually loses its saturation a little bit. But to keep the drawing interesting, you can you don't have to always uh, desaturate it and it's also a good idea to move it a little bit left or light on the color spectrum from, from the one uh, that you have. After the wood I switch uh, to rendering the cushion parts where I will add a texture later on so I'm not interested in painting in textures just now. I uh, am more concerned with adding the major light areas and don't really add shadows since the material is pretty dark as it is. Next, I start painting in the texture of the wood. Now, usually for wood, I like using photo textures, but this time around, I wanted to do it by hand. It is interesting and fun drawing in the lines we usually see in wooden textures. Uh, make sure to have a reference open in front of you before you do this. You don't just want to draw random uh, shapes. After I've been do I was done with the texturing of the wood, I laid out a quick shadow for the chair, but sadly this was pretty poo-poo, and I will have to fix it later on in the process, you'll see that. Uh, to make my chair pop, I wanted to add some highlights. For this, I locked the line layer and I was painting over the existing lines with a lighter color. While this is working most of the time, this time around I just didn't feel it, so I decided to make a new layer on top of the lines layer and paint over the highlighted edges there. And now comes the part with the photo textures. I looked up some leather textures on Google and uh, simply pasted them into the drawing. When you are using photo textures, one of the best layer blending modes to use is overlay. But this also takes color information from the texture image you are using. So to not take the brownish color of the leather, I went to adjustments and I desaturated the image. I also raised the brightness and the contrast a bit so the texture itself pops more. After that, I skewed the image so it fits the surface of the cushioned area. Skewing the image is very important because if you don't do that, it is going to ruin the effect. I repeated the same process for the back cushion as well. To make those highlights pop, I created a new layer, set it on screen and painted in some more highlights. Uh, this layer is somewhat see-through, so make sure to use another layer if you want to add solid color on top of it. Adding to the solid, uh, adding to the highlights, I also punched the darks a little bit, so I added more shadows where there's uh, very little light hitting. 
And now, as promised, it was time to fix the poo poo shadow I made earlier. This is a prime example of what happens if you do not put any effort into your shadows. Usually we can get away with this trick, but because the shape of a chair was a bit peculiar, I had to redo the whole thing. And now that I'm done with the shadows, it's time for the final part. For this, it's good to have a general understanding of composition. I always keep my early exploration sketches around so I can maybe use them later on for the presentation. Usually I like to push down the opacity of these elements and try and find a nice arrangement for them in the background. This is where the whole composition part comes in. This way the viewer can have a small glimpse into how the image got created. I also like to use a graphic element, like a, a border in this case. And you can see me really exploring uh, and, and trying to figure out different orientations for this border, even trying some colors in the background. Feel free to put as much time into this part as you need as well, because it is essential that your image looks good and it looks presentable and appealing to the viewer. So people on Instagram were curious about how I did the textures for this image. Hope this helped and feel free to send me your images if you do anything based on uh, this little tutorial sort of video. I would love to see what you come up with. But yeah, that was what I wanted to talk about in this video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video or dislike if you hated it. And uh, consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. You can follow me on Instagram for more drawing related stuff, but as always, wish you a great day and see you folks next time. Bye bye.